Claude 3 Sonnet has been released into the world, but is it any good for your research needs? Let's check it out. So this is the announcement page. Look at that, lovely, lovely. Look, you can see Claude 3.5 has improved in intelligence. And we've got here this one where it says that Claude 3.5 Sonnet has graduate level reasoning at 58.4%, which is better than any of their other ones, which is Probably that this has now got extreme imposter syndrome and is struggling day-to-day -day life because it's deciding what it wants to do with its life. It doesn't know. It's scared of the future. But nonetheless, it can graduate with honours. So here we are. Let's go down here and say that we've also got apparently an improvement in the vision. We'll be testing that later. And also artefacts. I uh, struggled with artefacts and you'll see how towards the end of this video. We're going to check each individual task that a researcher would typically go through and see if Claude Sonnet 3.5, I think that's the name, is capable of helping you. So the first thing I went over to Claude and I said, find me the most relevant peer-reviewed papers on transparent electrodes. So here it's uh, failed. Bah, bah. It actually just said to find the most recent peer-reviewed papers on transparent electrodes, I'll typically search blah 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 and then it just tells you how to do it. Some key areas of interest include this, 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 so it does give you some help but the thing is is that now we're up against tools like perplexity where you can actually say go and search the scientific uh, database for research articles. So this is not going to be a good use of your time so a massive fail for Claude there. Then I say I am writing a literature review and feel like I may have to rush off to the top toilet at any second. Can you create an outline of a literature review for OPV devices? So I didn't give it any context to that acronym and it does a pretty good job. So it knows that OPV devices is that and it gives me this sort of like structure. Now I think this structure is okay but ChatGPT gives a better response. Go check out my other video where I talk about using ChatGPT but the thing is is that this Claude, I think, needs a little bit more work in terms of the understanding of what constitutes a good academic response. It seems to be kind of holding back a little bit. ChatGPT goes deeper and starts to fill out the uh, bullet points underneath each of these. And that's what I like about it. This one just gives you the structure. But if that's what you're after, then no problem. But uh, you can obviously, like, you know, ask for more details. You can say, put... Um, bullet points under each one, bonk, and let's see what it, it looks like. So it does sort of like try its best to put in um, bullet points. You can see they're very, very brief bullet points, but once again, it's a good starting point and uh, it does an okay job. I like the uh, animation, by the way. That's the one thing I really like about this over chat GPT or perplexity, but um, overall it does an okay job. So um, a pass. A C plus. That's what I'll give it. What about academic editing? Let's take a look at that. So I said here, I am writing an abstract and here is the first draft. My supervisor made me cry, but he's just got divorced. So I don't think he's in the right frame of mind. Can he? No. Can you give me feedback and suggestions for changes? And then I put in the abstract that I was working on. And you can see here that it says, yeah, thanks for sharing your research draft. And I'm sorry to hear about the difficult situation with your supervisor. Remember that professional criticism, while sometimes harsh, should not be personal. That's actually really good advice. Thanks very much, Claude. Um, but let's focus on your improving your abstract. So it gives me some feedback, which I asked it for. It did this weird thing where it kind of put it in this like code box. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to copy paste that in to actually have a look at it. Organic photovoltaic devices. So it's, it's, it's kind of like kept the acronyms and uh, I think it's done an okay job at actually sort of tightening up what I wrote previously. Um, the, this revived ver version remains the key information while improving clarity and emphasizing the significance of your findings. So I do actually like what it's done here. So it is a good use of uh, Claude if you want to use it for writing but Let's have a look at other things. Now, one thing I love about ChatGPT and Perplexity is that it has vision. Now, this has promised me improved state-of-the-art vision, but can it do any better than Perplexity or ChatGPT? Let's take a look. I put in five research figures, and then I said, I've got all of these graphs. and need them in an order for my peer-reviewed paper. I'm so over this research. Can you help me? Now, the one thing about uploading 
uh, images or anything is you can only put five files and they have to be 30 megabytes or less each. Um, and so here it's got, I understand you're feeling overwhelmed with organizing these figures. I'd be happy to suggest a logical order. While I can't identify specific individuals, I can analyze the scientific contents and propose a sequence that builds the narrative of your work. So stupidly, I actually put like figure one, figure two, but interestingly, it didn't, um, look just here, figure one. Why did I do that? But I wanted to see if it could take the information from the captions to kind of like really deepen its understanding of these figures, something that ChatGPT can do really, really well. And so interestingly, it didn't give me just like figure one, figure two. It says figure one first, then three, then four, then two. So it's actually put figure two, which is uh, this one a little bit later than I had it originally. Um, but you can see here, it gives you an idea of why it thought this order would make sense. It shows the fabrication process. Um, this presents the SEM and AFM images. And then it says use image one. Uh, this provides additional SEM micrographs and spectral data. And then down here conclude with image the current density and voltage plot showing the electrical performance under your device under different conditions. So overall, it does an okay job. It understands what's in the images. Um, it is improved over the last time I checked this, um, but it still isn't as good as ChatGPT. Sorry, Claude. What about helping you understand peer-reviewed papers. So I put up this peer-reviewed paper and I said, can you explain this paper to me? I haven't had coffee yet today and forgot to put deodorant on. We've all been there. And then you just spend the rest of the day panicked that you're gonna stink and everyone's gonna know it's you. They know it's you, you know it's you. Don't worry about it, everyone's done it at some point. Anyway, it says here, I understand you're looking for a simplified explanation of this paper. It doesn't actually mention my stinky underarms at this point, so uh, shame on you, Claude. Um, and it says, I'll do my best to break it down into key points. And it's done an okay job um, at sort of like putting in the key points. Um, let's just see if it can go a little bit further. What would be the uh, the next steps in this research. What would be the next steps in this research? Does that even make sense, Andy Stapleton? Uh, it's one of those days, isn't it? One of those days. All right, here we go. So based on the findings of this study, optimized cooling rate, scale up studies, long-term stability. So it has actually done a pretty good job at uh, looking at the next steps of this research. So it could be a great way of finding research gaps, asking questions and going a bit further than just explain this paper to me. But overall, I think it does an okay job and it's completely free. So if I was to look for a good summary of peer-reviewed papers in PDF form, I think I would consider using Claude. Well done, Claude. Tick. Ah, oh, you're doing so good. Now I wanted to see what this, the artifacts stuff was all about. Artifacts, a new way to use Claude. Today we're introducing blah, blah, blah. And then down here in the example, it's got certainly, I'll create an eight bit symbol, blah, blah, blah. So it's just saying like, essentially it can create images and stuff. So I was like, okay, well, what do scientists and researchers do? Well, they produce poster presentations. Maybe it can give me an outline, maybe it can't. So I just said, can you suggest a layout for my poster presentation? And then it just gives me some words. And I'm like, no, I don't want words. Words. Give me an actual image. Create an image. Create an image eh, to show me what you mean. And here it says, I apologize, but I'm not able to create and generate, edit, manipulate, or produce images. But down here you say you can. Am I just, I mean, I didn't pay for it, but I think I am using Claude 3.5. So it is a little bit frustrating that that is sort of like dangled in front of me, but it can actually do it. And then I say, create an SVG. So I wanted, because here it says, certainly I'll create a simple 8 bit style crab for you using SVG. And I was like, good, we could probably use SVG. And then I go down here and no, nothing pops out. There's meant to be something popping out the side like here, but nothing happens. It just gives me the SVG. And uh, yeah, here's a basic outline in pseudo SVG format. So it's not even proper SVG format. Nonetheless, uh, yeah, this is uh, what it gave me. So Claude doesn't have the ability to run code yet. Well, you know, that's a little bit frustrating, but nonetheless, that's what we end up to. So Claude, not yet, not yet. Use ChatGPT and perplexity. Sorry, Sonnet 3.5. Not good enough for research just yet, despite the fact that you are a sad graduate level reasoning bot. Hmm.
If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about mastering research using ChatGPT for Opus. For Opus is so much more powerful than Claude's sonnet, so go check it out.